welcome to Writing Comics. I have great news. I got back the first splash page for my comic, and it looks great. It's a uh, it's a shot from down low, and it has Kira standing uh, at this, at this kind of so the camera is pointed at this kind of angle. I would show it to you, but I think that I will wait until the comic comes out because I think it would be better with context. But it's an amazing shot of uh, Kira in Ever Matter. I've also contacted Eric Weathers about doing my logo and he did a great job on sweetcast or down on downcast uh his logo so i contacted him about doing the logo for ever matter and i hoping that it's done this month and i get something back from him uh if you don't know who eric weathers is he has a He's working on a Indiegogo campaign called uh, Battle Brick Road, and it's just a retelling The Wizard of Oz. And it's Fall Off the Yellow Brick Road, created by Eric Weathers and Zeb Hartfield, a future dystopian retelling of The Wizard of Oz on a mission to find her father, Dorothy Gale, falls into a hidden world torn apart by years of warfare. So here's some of the concept art, and you can sign up to be notified about that campaign when it launches or as it's beginning to launch. And it looks like a great campaign, so uh, support Eric by going there and signing up. Give him, give him your email address so he can let you know when that campaign comes out. The artwork looks good, so that's something that I think that I've already signed up for that campaign, and I should start receiving emails about it before long and he's also doing the logo for ever matter and oh and your boy zach what is he doing over there i mean he's constantly going against the narrative he can't just he just can't get right uh now he's working with stallone on expendables and it's already hit sixty thousand dollars so it seems that people keep telling him he's doing things wrong or he he's going against the grain but he just keeps winning he's kind of like uh the orange man he just keeps winning and winning and winning it's, it's an amazing that he is working with Stallone to produce Expendables Go to Hell. And if you have not backed that yet, there's 902 backers, uh, and it's almost to $60,000. So, you know, if you we can get that over $60,000 probably by the end of the day. I would hope that tonight when I check back that it's over $60,000 or probably well over $60,000 by tonight. So go back. The Expendables Go to Hell, and I'll link that campaign in the comments down below i will also link eric weathers campaign battle brick road in the comments down below if you would like to have more information about the dorothy or the wizard of oz retelling for that so that is here so i was running through twitter and i found the most awful piece of cringe that you could possibly find and at first you're going to think that it's about uh trans people or non-binary people but we have to look a little closer to understand exactly what is going on here okay so what kind of planet must you live on to think that this is offensive now this is not about hate this is not about harassment do not go and uh, contact this person do not go and uh, leave your views on their wall or whatever it is that you want to do or you're tempted to do because this is not about that. This is about starting a conversation about the mindset that people must be in to say something as ridiculous as this. All right, so the tweet goes, men and women, can't you just say people? Does Star Trek think non-binary people are going to stop existing between now and the late 24th century? Get with the times. So the dialogue goes like this. You think you could just waltz back in here and be entrusted with taking men and women into space. <gasps> oh no. The ultimate sin. She did not include every single entity known to man. She did not include every single entity known in the galaxy or the universe. She said men and women because we all know that non-binary people exist too but this isn't really about non-binary people this isn't about men this isn't about women this isn't about trans trans people this is about thought control and policing the words that come out of your mouth could you imagine being in a writing room 
working for a major studio and has to worry about whether you used the words men and women in the wrong context or at the wrong time. So this is really about, I compare it to uh, flipping a house. So when I was uh, a younger man, I wanted to, there's this trend going around where you were flip, where everyone seemed to be flipping houses and they're making ood boodles of money. And I wanted to do that. It's something that interested me. But there's a trick to flipping houses, and it's not as easy as it looks. For one thing, you need to have connections so that you know uh, know what properties are coming out on the market and when. And you also have to be aware of the neighborhood in which you're planning on flipping a house. Because the trick is to buy a house that's priced cheaply because it's in disrepair in an up-and-coming neighborhood where the house values are going up and it's not as easy to find a house in that area uh, in an area like that as you might think but the problem is sometimes you can get a house where it fools you because you see all the comps all the comps which a comp is just what prices of houses sold in that neighborhood before so you can see that the comps are doing good and you can see that they're selling for a good price, but what you don't know is something has happened in that neighborhood that uh, you may not be aware of, and the prices and the uh, value of those houses are going down. So you buy a house, you put a lot of money into it, and you fix it up, and you make it comparable to the other houses, but you've actually lost money because as you were doing that work, the prices of the houses around it have gone down. Maybe it's because of a school district, maybe it's because the city is just uh, not servicing that neighborhood like they should, like they used to uh, in the past. But what, for whatever reason, the prices of that house is going down. So why I'm telling you that story about the houses and about flipping houses and the, and the good, getting in the good neighborhoods and the bad neighborhoods is because you think that something looks good and you think that you want that, but perhaps there's something going on under the surface that you don't know about and and maybe you don't want to jump in that field because along with flipping houses when I was younger much younger I wanted to get into writing comics that's what I wanted to do I had a dream to do that but life got in the way and I started doing other things I had to make a living immediately because I married young and it's just I don't regret that but it's something that I had to do. But now that I'm older and I have excess income to put toward producing a comic book, I am pursuing that dream. But one part of, of my dream when I was younger was to write for the big two, DC or Marvel. I wanted to take those characters and do something with some of those characters. It was just, uh, there was just something magical about those characters and those companies that made me want to work for them it seemed like that was the the goal that was the cream of the crop that was the top the highest that you could go in that field so of course it would be like uh playing high school football and then going to play in the nfl but those companies they look nice but when you look at what's going on in the big landscape the big scheme of things then you can see that there's a lot of backstabbing there's a lot of politics there's a lot of thought policing there's a lot of gatekeeping so that neighborhood of marvel and dc and mainstream comics looks really nice but i think that the value of those opportunities is going down on the other hand there is an up and coming neighborhood that i think people can invest in that is going up when you look at the independent comics coming from Comicsgate, these these comics are doing good. People are starting to trust in these creators because they're fulfilling their books, they're making quality comics, they're doing quality work, and people are liking what they're getting. Not to mention all the extras you get with trading cards, variant covers, um, posters. All of these things are quality items and they're shipped straight to you and you don't have to worry about reading through agenda. You don't have to worry about reading through politics. They're just good stories. And I think that the value now has shifted from working for Marvel, working for DC, and working for yourself. Because when you work for yourself and you invest in this neighborhood called Comicsgate, then you own the property in which the, you're putting your work into. So when we go back to the flipping the house 
uh, scenario. It's like if you work for DC, you build a house and you build something that's nice, but you don't own that property anymore. So you don't get, when you leave that company, you don't take that with you. But when you work for Comicsgate and you work for yourself as an independent, then I'm sorry, I shouldn't say work for Comicsgate, but work under the banners, the banner of Comicsgate and you you build that property, you do the work, you make it nice, you make it what you want it to be, you make it the best that you could possibly make it. When you get done, you own that property. And not only do you own that property, but the value of those books and those items that are being created by these creators is only going up. I truly believe that Comicscape books, the independent books by independent creators, the quality books, there are some that's out there that's just not up to par, but the quality books are going to be the collectible items in the future. You don't have to worry about people like this saying you can't use men and women in your book because that's the way it's been done for thousands of years. If you want to do that, you can do that. And then the customers will sort out what's good, what's bad. So when you create that book, you don't have to worry about uh, people saying whether you can use the word men and women in your book because it doesn't meet some kind of thought policing or gatekeeping concept that they have created in their mind. All you have to worry about is creating something that's good, something that tells a story, something that's entertaining, and something that people can get behind. So that's my thought of it. If you are apprehensive about backing some of these Comicsgate books or some of these books that are uh, made by these independent creators, I suggest that you give it a try. They are great books. They're great people. Hey, if you like the video, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button. Button because it helps to support my channel and it helps me to put out every matter which is the ultimate goal uh, for me at this point is just getting this book out there so that you can enjoy it and also if you have another independent creator uh, that you like another comments gate creator that you like then please support them by liking and subscribing to their channel and support their Indiegogo campaigns it's also sometimes we get a little lax on signing up for the pre-launch campaigns but it also helps these guys and it helps uh, these creators if you sign up for that pre-launch so that they know that you're getting all the updates for their campaign I appreciate it I hope that your imagination runs wild and that all of your dreams comes true thanks for watching